So section 5.5 five notes is on direct variation. It is a certain type of linear relationship um, where a change in your x directly results to a change in y. Um, on graphs, it will look something like this. And we're still talking about linear relationships. Remember, everything is linear. But I want you to notice something similar about these lines. So this is going to be direct variation. Oops. Let's see. All right, that's pretty close. That's an example of a direct relationship, direct variation. Uh, this is an example of direct variation right here. I'll draw another run here real fast and have you compare. Okay, so there's our three different uh, direct variation relationships. So what do you notice is the same about all of them? Yes, they all have a straight line because they all are linear. So I already mentioned that they all are linear functions. But what makes these functions different than maybe some other ones we looked at? What do these have in common? So think about this. This one is not a direct variation. Uh, this one is not a direct variation figured out yet? Direct variation means it goes through the origin. These lines go through the origin. And if it goes through the origin, what is the y-intercept going to be equal to? It's going to equal zero. So if you think about a linear function, slope-intercept form, remember y equals mx plus b. This is your slope, this is your y-intercept. Now, if your y-intercept is always 0, it actually doesn't have a b. Now, instead of y equals mx, that's pretty much what direct relationship is, this direct variation, but it has a different form. So instead of m for slope, it has a different letter, y equals kx. That's direct variation. And k is called your constant of variation. This just tells us what it varies by. So the letter k, it is the same as the slope, but in this case it's called the constant of variation. It's also called slope, like slope isn't wrong. So we're going to have equations like this, where we have y equals 2x. So that means for every x value I double it to get my y. So these are directly related. For example, if you think about this, if I make a little chart, when x is 1, y, if you take 1 times 2, you get 2. When x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. When x is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. So there's that direct relationship where x is doubled every single time. If it had a y-intercept, you'd add a number to that every time, and it would change it a little bit. Okay, so it's still linear. This is still the slope, but this would also be what is called the constant of variation. If I ask, so what is the constant of variation, your answer would be 2. And that's represented by the letter k. k equals 2, your constant of variation. See the k? That's what that is. Okay, so now let's turn to the handout. So this handout goes through some examples. So you can write here that this is our notes that we're doing. So tell whether each equation represents a direct variation. If so, identify the constant of variation. Okay, so here we go, y equals 3x. So direct variation is in the form y equals kx. So there's a number in front of x, and there's not a number after it. So this equation here, it is a direct variation. That's what we're going to fill in the box here. because it is in the form y equals kx. And the constant of variation in here, the letter k, would be 3. Okay, now same thing for b. Um, this one, though, we have to solve for y. We want to get it in this form, just like slope-intercept form. We're going to solve for y first. So on this side, I'm going to subtract 3x and do the same thing on the other side here. So this is step one here. We solve the equation for y. 
since 3x is added to y, we are subtracting 3x from both sides. Okay, so I subtract 3x from both sides, so these cancel. Uh, y equals negative 3x plus 8. These are unlinked terms, we cannot combine those. And there's my equation, y equals negative 3x plus 8. So is that direct variation? No, it's not, because you have a y-intercept, it's not 0. So this equation is not direct variation. because it cannot be written in the form y equals kx. So it has this plus 8 afterwards, and that's why it is not direct variation. It can't have a plus or minus after our x. And that's actually a good note to make, so I'm going to make that note here. You want to add, maybe add this here. You can't have plus or minus, meaning addition or subtraction, plus or minus a number after x. y-intercept has to be 0. Alright, on the next page we're going to do the same process. So first, number 1, we're going to solve the equation for y. Since 4x is subtracted from 3y, now I know it says plus here, so it's a little confusing, but you always want to look at the sign in front. That's a negative 4x. We need it to cancel out to be 0. So to cancel out negative 4x, we add 4x, and then those will cancel out to be 0. We have to add 4x to the other side. So we are adding 4x to both sides. So these cancel, leave me with 3y. And then here I have 0 plus 4x, so I have just 4x on this side. So then here's step two. Since y is multiplied by 3, you have to do the opposite and divide both sides by 3 in order to undo the multiplication. So we do the opposite. We divide to undo the multiplication. Divide by 3, divide by 3, so those 3's cancel out. So then we have 4x over 3, or it's the same as just 4 thirds x. So is this direct variation? Yes, you just have a number in front of x. It's not plus or minus anything over here. So it is direct variation because it is in the form y equals kx. It's in that form. And the letter k is... Our constant variation is 4 thirds. Now we'll look at some other types of problems. So here we have a table. Tell whether it's direct variation or not. We're going to write an equation. So first we're going to look at the slope. And so you can do the change in y over the change in x, this equation here. And I can use this as a coordinate point and this as a coordinate point. So the second y minus the first y over the second x minus the first x. So y goes from 6 to 12, so that's a change of 6, and then it goes from 2 to 4, 4 minus 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that's my slope, and that will be 3x for a slope. And then, let's see, what would the y-intercept be? So once I have my slope, my y-intercept, so we have y equals, you can think, mx plus b, and my m is 3. But how do we find the y-intercept? Well, what you can do is choose a point for x and y and plug it in for x and y to solve for b. Choose any of these points you want. I'm going to choose that one because it's small numbers. And I'm going to make my y this 6. So this y, oops, 
So to write a y, I'm going to write a 6 equals 3 times x. I'm going to choose this 2 because that's the coordinate point I chose. I chose the coordinate point 2, 6 here plus b. Now when I plug in x and y on a point, I can solve for b and figure out what the y-intercept is. So here I have 6 equals 3 times 2 is 6 plus b. So what does b have to equal? Well, you can think 6 plus what is 6? It's going to be 0. Or you can go ahead and solve by subtracting 6 on both sides. And I get 0. These cancel. b equals 0. So that means our y-intercept is 0. So this is a direct variation. That's one way to tell. Another way to tell is by looking at the y value and the x value. How are these related? How do you get from 2 to 6, 4 to 12, 6 to 18? Well, you can think, oh, it's tripling it every time. Yeah, each y value is 3 times the corresponding x value. Because of that, that makes it a direct variation. So if you can see each of these x values are multiplied by a certain number to get these, that's the short and easy way to find that direct variation instead of solving to make sure the y-intercept is 0. So that means it can be written in the form y equals kx, and the k this time is 3, because the x is tripled to get the y. Um, another way to figure out the same answer is actually to just take this ratio of y over x. So you're taking y divided by x, y divided by x, y divided by x. So see, that's what it's doing here. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So you notice all of those fractions, all those ratios, equal the same thing. So if they're the same, then it's also a direct variation. So this is direct variation. Because the value of y over x, so you take y divided by x in every part of the table, is the same. For each pair in the table. So that's another way. So let's do the same type of question on a new example here. So it says write an equation. So what's happening to this x to get to y? Just kind of think about it this time. So if I have 1, what do I do to get negative 2? And if I have 3, what do I do to it get 0? And if I have 7, what do I do to it to get 4? Did you think subtract 3? If you take x minus 3, does that work? 1 minus 3 is negative 2. If you do 3, minus 3, I get 0. If I do 7 minus 3, I get 4. So that's the equation. That's what's happening to x as you subtract 3 every time to get the y. So each y value is 3 less than the corresponding x value. So is this direct? No, it is not a direct variation. Oops. Because it can not <laughs> it cannot be written as y equals kx. I missed the word not there. Now the other way is we have to find that ratio, find the y divided by x. If it's the same for each pair, it is direct variation. We already know that it's not, so I'm going to show you what happens when it's not. So again, y divided by x, negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2 y divided by x, 0 divided by 3 is 0. See how it's not the same? So it's not going to be direct. You can stop right here. You don't have to keep going. Um, this is going to be, it's not even a whole number, so I'm not even going to solve that. So this is not direct variation. Okay, so I finished it out, but it's not the same for each pair, so it's not direct variation. Thanks. Good luck.